here. Diamond Miller, 6'3", long and athletic, and in the big games, she plays her best. She can defend, she can turn defense into offense, she sprints the floor, she's a great finisher in transition, and she knows how to get to the free throw line. Senior is expected to be a very high draft pick this summer for the WNBA. Terps at six and two, they have faced a challenging schedule with losses to number one South Carolina and DePaul. They have a big win over Baylor. And for the Fighting Irish, they have cruised through the first six games of their schedule. This is their first big test with the Terps in town. Home whites for the Irish Road Blacks for Maryland. They will re-jump it. Dee Kantner, Paulani Spurlock Welsh, and Angelica Suffren are officials here tonight. Miller jumping against the Oregon transfer, Kylie Watson. Irish could have a significant size advantage. Some injuries along the front line for Maryland. Uh, they they got to go with a smaller crew. Now Maryland will mix it up, but they'll start in a zone. They do play some zone, and you think Notre Dame is a three-point shooting team? Well, they've been more dangerous off the bounce early in this part of the season than they have been from shooting the three-point shot. Off the bounce, West Bell, and is called for the travel. Good help coming that time from Diamond Miller. And see, this is where, Beth, you've got to understand scout personnel, and Brenda Fries has won a national championship, so she is putting a game plan in play early on defense that is really going to challenge with some gap protection out of their man or out of their zone. As you check out the starting lineup, Miller really the only returning starter from last year. They have nine new players. Faith Masonis sat out last year with an injury. They are certainly glad to have her back after they lost five of their top six scorers from a year ago. So some transition going on right now. Maryland side, speaking of transition, the bucket there for the Irish. Well, neither team really likes the outlet, and they have players that can get it off the glass and go. Now, whoever can rebound the best will be able to play the pace they want to play. Good dig down and the help from Kylie Watson to tie up Diamond Miller. 16 left on the shot. Here's the Ivy League Player of the Year last year, Abby Myers. Twice she gets defended at the rim. Shot is blocked. Myers, the transfer from Princeton. Sanaya Citron hits the three. So I'm just going to tell you right now, that possession right there defensively for Maryland, if you don't stop the ball and locate the shooters, Notre Dame is going to shoot it like that all night. You have got to get back and transition defense. Penzan, the transfer from USF, and another turnover. Numbers for Notre Dame, three on one. Miles leaves it off for West Bell. Ben, that's an example of the tilt that I'm talking about. See how the floor tilts when you get numbers? You got three on one going downhill towards the basket. That is hard to defend. Got to take care of the ball on this end and get a good look. Miller with the left hand off the bounce. Shai Sellers, number zero in black for Maryland, will have the assignment on Olivia Miles when they're in their man-to-man -man defense. That will be a matchup to keep your eye on. West Bell will try and shoot over the top. That looked like a little triangle and two to me. Watson had it blocked by Miller, and then it goes out of bounds off of Watson. Neil Ivey, the former national champion point guard here at Notre Dame, longtime assistant for Muffet McGraw, and now in her third season as the head coach. Huge turnaround. They were plus 14 in the wins category a year ago. And Brenda Fries now year number 21. Before they joined the Big Ten, 11 ACC championships over the course of their illustrious history. And of course, she was in charge in the 2006 season when they won the national title. Turnover goes back to Maryland. A similar story for both these programs. When Notre Dame left the Big East to go to the ACC, they had a dominant run, five straight years of titles. 
And similar for Maryland, when they left the ACC for the Big Ten, they had a similar run, five, six years in a row of winning regular seasons and tournaments. Two really good basketball leagues. Baseline drive off the mark. And a whistle after the play. Westbelt gets back up a little gingerly on that right ankle. And she will pick up the foul. Sellers is the sophomore from Aurora, Ohio, an all Big Ten freshman selection and the sixth player of the year in the Big Ten a season ago. She's got length. She's kind of a prototypical Maryland player to me. You know, she rebounds, she can defend her position, she can score in all three levels, plays with a high motor. When she and Diamond are on, this is a tough team yeah. to deal with. Well, much bigger roles for both of them with the transfers in the offseason of the All-America candidates, Angel Reese and Ashley Arusu, who have departed. It's like they're back in their defense, and they're really trying to shadow and shade Olivia Miles, not letting her get a good, good look. Watson, no. And a whistle on the rebound for Lauren Ebo, the transfer from Texas. See, what you have to do if you're Notre Dame right now is because it doesn't matter what defense Brenda Freeze is playing, man zone, junk, whatever it is, you got to run your stuff and you got to accelerate through your actions. She wanted to travel. Yep. And instead, it's a foul on Diamond Miller, her first. So Ebo to the line, 67% so far. She's 6'4", alongside Kylie Watson, also at 6'4", along that front line for Notre Dame. This is the highest scoring team in the league, fifth best in the country at 90 per night. Offensive rebound and another opportunity. They have also been a force on the glass, Debbie, which is usually Maryland's forte. But this year, Notre Dame plus 17 yeah. margin. And Maryland is minus one. Mm. It's really interesting because over Brenda Freeze's tenure in the 21 years, they've typically had a double-digit rebounding margin. Yeah, she said they have to be competitive on the boards and they have to keep Notre Dame off the free throw line. But right now, Notre Dame off to a good start in both categories. Mabry tries to beat the buzzer. Good defensive possession for the Terps. Yeah, see, I think when the game has slowed down and Maryland has been able to set their quarter court D, I think Notre Dame has struggled. Their buckets have come in transition. And when you force them to take it out of the net, then you can set your three-quarter court pressure. Try to take Notre Dame deeper into their offensive options. Sellers with the pull up and pop at the other end. You got to know personnel too. You got to know who you're going to guard and who you're going to sag off. Ebo pointing to Watson and saying, hey, I need that rim side, not Diamond Miller side on the pass. You were a little concerned with Notre Dame's ability to take care of the ball tonight. That might be an issue. They've got three turnovers here early. I've been concerned the last two years with their ability to take care of the basketball and, and to close out games, to play under pressure. And this is kind of a soft pressure. This is more of a pressure to take some time off. Keep Olivia Miles on one side of the floor. Now, when she goes and hasn't had a shot in a while, she starts looking for her own offense. Like right now, she's going to go late to the shot clock, probably want a ball screen here. Ebo buries the defender and perhaps a little too good. Offensive foul. Both teams just kind of like two big heavyweight boxers, just punching it out. Citron from three in transition and Sellers with a bucket from the top of the key. Well, one of the keys that we've talked about is tempo and pace and the ability to play the way you want to play. You have to be on the glass. Maryland typically a very good rebounding team. That's a key tonight for them to stay on the glass with Notre Dame. As you mentioned earlier, Notre Dame can play big. 
And Notre Dame is playing with a bigger lineup on the floor right now. Maryland's got to be able to stay with them on the boards and be able to get out on the break. Maryland turns it over. 8-2 advantage thus far for Notre Dame, but they have not turned those into second chance points just yet. And now a little token pressure. So that's not the kind of ATO that you want coming off the timeout. So you get the ball to Diamond Miller in a place where she should be able to score or get to the line every time. Miscommunication there. Citron yeah. looking for Westbell. That's a, five turnovers. It's a hesitation, right? Notre Dame's yeah. not sure. They're they're holding the ball and they're looking and they're reading. They're not moving. They got to cut. They got to move. Move the ball. Doesn't matter what defense you're in. The pass is faster than the feet. That is true. That is proven. Here's Miller. Into the lane. Moves to the left, off the mark, scrapping for the rebound. Miles with the push. Here comes a transition opportunity. It's a really good job of Lavender Briggs getting on Miles immediately so she doesn't have clear vision to the, to the rim. That'll be a blocking foul underneath on Maryland. Good cut to the rim for Watson. Hey, it's the 21st annual Women's Jimmy V Classic Sunday on ESPN2. How about this double dip? Number nine, Virginia Tech and Tennessee gets us going at one o'clock on ESPN2. And then right back here at Purcell Pavilion for number three, UConn, number seven, Notre Dame, three Eastern on ABC. Don't forget to donate to the V Foundation for Cancer Research. Go to V.org. 18 million people our cancer survivors living in our country. And by 2030, there should be 22.1 million, according to the research from the V Foundation. So if you have a chance, please give. And the research matters. Miles, her first shot attempt, that won't go. Sellers, the runner is good. Boy, it's been a hot start for Virginia Tech, right? They're one of the favorites in the ACC. Tennessee a bit sluggish out of the gate. And then, UConn already with three top 10 wins. AZ FUD has really emerged this year. Well, speaking of Virginia Tech, Elizabeth Hitley, the preseason pick in the ACC for player of the year, 6'6". Six, six. And last year when they played Tennessee, she went one and went for 12 from the floor. Ooh. Expect a much better performance out of her if they're gonna win. Westfeld with one on the shot clock, got it. Good recognition from Maddie. KK Bransford there. Terrific freshman, number 14 in white for the Irish. Sellers takes the hit and lays it in. Well, Shy Sellers doing an outstanding job of attacking in their transition game before Notre Dame could get organized. And there's a smart play right there by Abby Myers, right? You don't want to throw the ball back underneath the other team's basket, especially when they're not organized. This is a good no call. Principle of verticality at the rim. Good bucket by Sellers. The swipe on the inbounds. Miller on the move. Blocked inside. Watson got a piece of it. Briggs tried to wrap that around. Here's Sellers. Another scoop up and in. Good off the bounce for Shy. And it's Maryland's first lead. She's got 10. 10 first quarter points for Cheyenne Sellers, the 6'2 sophomore. Now you see why she's shooting 52% from the floor as a guard. Look at this take off the bounce. She has been attacking the rim, averaging 12 a game already in double digits. She'll take a break. Miles goes out for the Irish. Sonia Citron is back in. Mabry, quick release, bit long. Well, Diamond Miller is the only other player that scored for Maryland so far. Here's Gigi Cook, one of the freshmen. Number 11 in black. Rattles around and out for Myers. Mabry with the cross. Back to Maryland. See, that, that's a missed layup and a missed opportunity. And I think it's the, the tempo of the game is definitely in Maryland's favor, right? 
Notre Dame's a team that averages 90. Maryland only averages 75. Okay, and they have Notre Dame just hesitating enough, like not looking to be aggressive, not looking to attack, not playing with tempo in the quarter court. Miller and Sellers are both out here in the final two minutes. Let's see where Maryland looks for points. Briggs will give it a go. And it's Notre Dame basketball. You know, every time you reverse the ball, two or three sides, your percentage of scoring goes up because you can get a better uncontested shot when you do that. Maybe one off the pass. But players today, everybody's got to put it on the bounce. Yeah. Maybe the lob is picked off. The D by Alexander inside. Myers with the skip. Weak side, Briggs gets the layup. This looks like the Maryland team that played Baylor. Mm. Got a win over the Lady Bears. Final minute here of the first quarter. First big test of the season for the Fighting Irish. Watson tries to step through and one. What a play by Watson. Good footwork on the inside. Late on the help to close the space. Good step through with contact. Keep your eyes on the prize. First on Masonis and Watson to the line. The junior from Linwood, New Jersey. Former New Jersey State Player of the Year coming out of high school. Started out at Oregon and now here in South Bend. She was part of that number one recruiting class that went to Oregon. Here comes a little extended pressure by the Irish. Sellers is back out there. They have not been able to take the dribble away from her. Tries to crash the boards and draws the foul. And she's got the right idea because she gets the switch. And now you've got the smaller Dara Mabry guarding you. And she's already got 10 points. So you know she's seeking shots. This gives Maryland a chance for the last possession of the quarter. Second foul there on Maddie Westbelt, so Natalia Marshall has to hustle in. Excuse me, the shot clock got reset to 20, so they don't have the last possession. This has got to be for Diamond. Yeah, she's back out there on the elbow. That's way too much dribbling. Okay, it takes too long, the play's too slow developing. Coach Freeze is yelling at her team to get into certain actions. Now you only got six on the shot clock. Miller's got it. Off the bounce, is explosive to the rim for Diamond Miller. Last chance for the Irish to beat the buzzer. Citron gets into the lane. It will stay at this end with a tenth left. Time for one tip. And that'll do it for the first quarter. 16-13 Maryland, led by Cheyenne Sellers. Ten first quarter points, the rest of the team three for 11. And this is how she's done it, aggressive in the paint, to the rim, eye off the glass, bucket for Sellers. Well, we start out tonight all even in the ACC Big Ten Challenge at three and three, and the ACC has now added one, Duke a winner tonight, so they grab the 4-3 lead. Don't forget, this is just the first game of our doubleheader tonight coming up next here on ESPN2. Number 12, NC State, and number 10, Iowa, led by Caitlin Clark, who last year led the nation in scoring and assists. Unprecedented. Hey, we're going to hustle over to the Morris Inn, all right? Yes. And we're we going to watch that NC State-Iowa game. Got to get a good seat for that one. Indiana, by the way, big lead over North Carolina at the half. That's another intriguing one. Top 10 matchup tonight. 
A lot of good ball on the tube tonight. A lot of parity, huh? What is it? Uh, yeah, it's oh, preseason top ten. Six have already lost at least once. Miles is fouled on the drive. Well, and there were a couple of teams preseason top ten that I don't even have in my poll, and they may struggle to stay. Well, Tennessee's already out. Louisville lost again yesterday. Yeah. Ohio State looked very impressive. Texas is coming back because Rory Harmon yeah. is coming is his back, and she makes a huge difference for Vic Schaefer's team on both sides of the ball. South Carolina, number one, unbeaten. Another nice dub for the Gamecocks. Beat UCLA the other night. Good news, Leah Boston played in that one. Healthy, had a double-double. See, this defense of Maryland has kept Notre Dame on the top of the floor. Everything they're doing is just back and forth on the top of the floor. They're not playing inside out. Sellers with the pull-up on the wing. Offensive rebound, Terps, Myers, short corner, got it. I know her parents, Val and Steve, are watching at home. Abby Myers had a nice chat with her today, shoot around. That's a good get in the portal by Maryland. Mabry with the miss. The third of the Mabry sisters that could all shoot the three. When we spoke to Coach Ivy before the game, she said transition defense is what she was concerned about, and that's what's hurting them. They're not getting back. They're turning the ball over. Live ball turnovers lead to breakouts for Maryland. Lavender Briggs, another one of the transfers from Florida, and with that bucket, she now has 1,001 points in her career. With the Gators and now the Terps. What a great defensive game plan early by Coach Freeze. It's turning Maryland, Maryland turning them over, getting on the break, pushing the ball up the floor, getting the right, mis getting mismatches, forcing the mismatches because you're sprinting the floor. Miller. Mishandled by Notre Dame, so Maryland will keep. And as sloppy as Notre Dame has looked, not connected, not sharp for Coach Ivy. It's just a six-point game. Eight turnovers for the Irish early. Miller directing traffic. Sellers. And a bump from Miles. Debbie, that's goggles on goggles, that say. matchup. All goggles team. <laughs> Probably the first on Olivia. Yeah, this is a, a, a Notre Dame team in, a, that doesn't have a rhythm about them right now, and they don't have the right cadence. And sometimes, for me, I'm always a big believer in changing your defense to change the rhythm of your offense. Underneath and back up for Diamond Miller. Maryland is playing so well right now. They're doing a great job of taking what Notre Dame has given them. They're playing aggressively, and because they score, they can set this three-quarter court pressure. And it's not a it's not an up the line over aggressive. It's just a really good personnel scheme. Mabry's runner won't go. They're getting points in transition. They're getting into the paint. They're scoring off of turnovers. And Miller. No, tried to drop it off to Myers. Abby didn't roll to the rim. Watson, pass, picked off. Nice play by Briggs to tip it to a teammate. Really nice play. Tough well, shot, well, Sellers. A lot of contact right there. Bransford the other way. Miller hustles back there. to bother and and one. Sellers late to the party. And Watson has a chance for her second three-point play. Good find up the floor. And Diamond Miller hustles. And, and Bransford's got to finish on the left side of the floor with her left hand. That is the second foul on Sellers, who had been their best weapon offensively. And now. She will check out. See, this is what I mean. Notre Dame hasn't played well, and they're just sticking around, right? You know? Masonis in the trail. Short. 
Allen getting on the glass here in the second quarter. Nice feed. Miller drops it off for Pinzon and a timeout Notre Dame. Yeah, I don't blame Neil Ivy. She is getting into him. Report. I'll be joined by one Hall of Famer, and that's Sean Farnham. Uh, we're going to look ahead to Caitlin Clark in Iowa taking on NC State. But in our current matchup, Maryland and Notre Dame. Coach, what do you think? I think that Maryland has done a terrific job, not known much for their off their defense, but they've been able to slow down Notre Dame. Yeah, that defense has been really disruptive after Notre Dame got off that 7-0 start. But I have a quick question for Please you. Please tell me. That's beautiful. What is it, velvet? You're going to say that for the halftime. No, we're doing it at the uh, More of that. Here Come we go. <laughs> From the uh, velvet to what uh, we can report, Neil Ivey does have the leather pants on here courtside, uh, continuing the Notre Dame tradition started by Muffet McGraw, although that was a skirt for Muffet over the years, as Miller off the bounce misses Good. the lay and They have fixed the rebounding issue Maryland has, and now let's see how Notre Dame responds out of that timeout. Yeah, well, Diamond did not respond very well there with a foul. Is that a foul on Diamond Miller? In the backcourt? No, that was on uh, the end. She can't believe she missed the layup. Neil Ivey heated during that last timeout. She was getting after the Fighting Irish for their effort. Miles. Citron. Sonia's got the three. Now that's a smart play by Olivia Miles. You get into the middle of the defense and then you kick it out for a three point shot. If you continue to just play on the top and never dive down into that defense, Maryland can stay matched up. Briggs. Baseline. Weak side Briggs. Miller tried to dive. They got a. Beat the shot clock, under five. Pinzan, deep, off the mark. That did not hit the rim, so a uh, violation on the troops. But you know, all this hesitation, stutter, stop, dead ball turnover, all of that favors Maryland, because now they can set their D and not allow Notre Dame to play with pace. They have forced 10 Irish turnovers already. Miles with the catch inside. Good feed from Citron. Well, Citron and Miles have connected on the last two baskets, and Miles gets behind that defense. And Maryland has been doing a really good job of communicating all their action on this end of the floor. Terps will respond by making sure Diamond gets a touch. Offensive rebound and a foul, and Diamond will head to the line. Maryland has had great ball pressure, and then no communication on the backside, and Olivia Miles makes herself available underneath a hoop. Slips behind the defense. Diamond Miller will shoot a pair here, 81% on the season. Out of Somerset, New Jersey. I don't think Olivia Miles wants to be sitting over there. She's a baller now. She wants back in. She picked up her second foul along with Westbelt, so two starters with two fouls for the Irish. And see, some coaches have the two foul rule, some don't. Maybe Coach Ivy is not sure that Olivia would play with good enough defensive discipline or avoid a charge. Doesn't want to take a chance on a two possession game. Really good box out there by Brene Alexander. Four minutes to go here in the first half. Miller spins and steps. Can't knock it down. Yeah, I think Maryland is breaking off their offense a little too early and looking to go one-on-one. -on -one. And coming off the timeout, Notre Dame at least has gotten in a stance a couple of times for a couple of defensive possessions. Ebo fouled before the shot uh, by Alexander. Oh, 
Citron will try for three again. That's a couple for her here in the second quarter. Three for three outside the arc. Sonia leads Notre Dame with nine points, and they're back within one. Alexander's runner goes. Yeah, Maryland is a team that definitely plays off the bounce. Really going to test the foot speed of Notre Dame and the quarter court defensively. Bransford gets the lefty layup. Masonis from the elbow, that won't go. Notre Dame looking to regain the lead. Citron on the run and she's fouled. They had the early seven point lead, then Maryland went up by as many as eight and now Notre Dame can grab it back. Yeah, I was talking about ball movement, getting inside, playing inside out. Two threes in this quarter coming off the last time out for Citron because someone got a piece of the paint or a penetrating pass and then kicked it back out for her to knock down a triple going inside the defense, not playing on top of it. And Mila Reynolds will check into the lineup for Maryland from right here in South Bend, Washington High School that also produced the likes of Skylar Diggins and Jackie Batiste. And came here to, or stayed home and played here at Notre Dame. I mean, those are two legends mm. for Notre Dame were her high school coaches. There's dad, he's got the camera out, mom right next to him. Steve and Marcy in the house tonight. They have another sister that is signed to play for Maryland as well. Here's Alexander off the front of the rim. Better get on Citron. Lots of tough catch, super pass for Bransford. Good use of the timeout by E.L. Ivy when they were down eight. Well, since she called that timeout, they've gotten in a rhythm. Def offensively, they've gone inside out, and they've gotten in a stance on the defensive end. Since the timeout, it's a 17 to six run by the Irish. Miller. Diamond probing between two defenders, offensive rebound, got it. She's got 10. Final two minutes of the first half. And one of the biggest showdowns of our ACC Big Ten Challenge. One of four games that are rank versus rank. Mabry, weak side, has not been able to dial it in. And then the steal for Citron, three on two. Sonia behind the back to the rim, won't go. And Miller. six three up the floor, handling like a guard. Alexander off the bounce. Stick back no good from Reynolds. Sure have missed a lot of layups yeah. tonight. Maybe getting a little fatigued here. Final minute. Good dive. Ebo with the dive to the bucket and another missed chippy. So you got a chance for a two for one here. If you work that shot clock properly, Mabry gets handsy. Been a frustrating first half for Dara. 0 for 7 from the floor. I want Diamond Miller to get this ball back on the elbow and score. That's what I think Brenda Fries is going to run. She's the inbounder, and now Miller gets the ball back. 
Well, they Elbow run, extended. They run her up that aisle. Oh, so nice hesitation. Yes, that's the right read. Everyone in the house knew she was going to get the last shot. Waited for the help defender to clear in front of her. And then the burst to the bucket. Shot clock and game clock about even. Bransford is running the baseline. Back out top to Mabry, calling for a screen. They got a hustle. Mabry, the step through pass picked off. And that'll take care of the first half. I think they're going to check the clock here to see if they need to put some time back on. There was about a second, what, about a second difference shot in game clock, but there was yeah. no possession there at the end. No, it was, a, it, it was a, well, it was a turnover, and Maryland had possession, but I don't know if there's any time remaining. Well, maybe, yeah, there point is something. You know what, if there's, if there's more than point three, you at least catch. you can catch and shoot. Really, it's a tap. It's a tap if it's less than point three. Point nine, so they'll okay. have a chance. So this is a play that Coach Freeze likes to run at the end of the games that they worked on today at shoot around. They have several players that can throw a baseball pass from the baseline to the nail on the other end of the floor. We watched them do it today. Sellers with the left hand, barely gets across half court. And that one wouldn't have countered had it gone. Entertaining first half, Maryland 33, Notre Dame 32. They tried the Joey play there and it uh, was not as executed as they would have liked. But Diamond Miller good in the first half for 12 points and four rebounds and the one point advantage. As we get you set, to head back to the studio with our ESPN2 halftime report with Monica, Sean, and Carolyn. Ten points, picked up a couple of fouls. The backcourt that we uh, highlighted in the open uh, did not provide the scoring punch. In fact, Mabry's still looking for her first basket of the night. See so, if that'll come soon. So like all good coaches, you save something for the second half. We did not see this set out of Maryland in the first half. They start with 1-4 low, and they get the ball inside to Sellers. She's got to stay on her feet, though. Yeah. Citron forced her away from the bucket on the shot, and the Irish will get it. It was Maryland in the first quarter, and their defense led the way, and then Notre Dame in the second quarter, their defense turned things around. So if you're Brenda Freeze, you go in the locker room, and you refocus your team on that defensive game plan of the first quarter, keeping them out of the paint, keeping them ball on top of the floor. That's where the adjustment is for Notre Dame in the second half. Putting West Belt on the nail, playing inside that defense, not playing on the top of the floor. Attack in the middle of that 2-3. Horns, Flair, attacking Olivia Miles with those two fouls. She doesn't want to pick up a third. I keep going to that matchup. Not many can contain Miller 1v1, and she takes advantage there. You've been watching the World Cup, haven't you? I have been watching a little bit yeah, of the World Cup. Yeah, that's a little Cup. soccer uh, verbiage. I had Belgium making a deep run. It's been a dark day. Watson. Westbeld right there to clean it up. Right place, right time. Yeah, now how did Cheyenne Sellers end up on the ground? <laughs> and Maddie Westbeld wide open. That is the second foul on Mabry, way away from the bucket, just getting her hand on it. Yeah. I mean, players got to adjust. Yeah. That's an emphasis in the game. Adjudicate the rules. That's what the officials are told to do. Yep. Seamless transition, Debbie, from butt chewing to adjudicate so far <laughs> in the third quarter for you. <laughs> Showing your range. But <laughs> Nope. A little steppy. 
Oh, excuse me, double dribble. Here's Miles, the sophomore out of Phillipsburg, New Jersey, an all-ACC performer, and she finds her running mate so, after the 07 start, Mabry hits. You know, so Brenda Freeze is rolling her eyes like, you gotta be kidding me. How many times have we told you not to let Mabry I think that's get on a the great look? Report. Yeah. I think so. The response for the Terrapins and Lavender Briggs. Everyone on this defensive possession should be communicating every action on the defense. Nice you, look away. Yeah, you get a great look inside. You gotta cut her window down, Miles. There have been way too many missed layups for both sides tonight. And another turnover. I mean, come on, the fundamentals have got to be better right here. Quit turning the ball over. This is what Marcus and Tyler would be saying if they were here. Transition defense, keep them off the line, which they've done. Stay with them on the glass. Find Mabry. Find Mabry yeah. I know right now Marcus and Tyler are disgusted that yes. she got a wide open three. <laughs> That's a picture from several years ago, yeah. by the way. They're teenagers now, right? They're now 14 yeah. years old. Eighth graders. They've been making scouting reports their whole lives. Mabry, uh oh, starting to get a little confidence up now. Back to back buckets. Miller leaves it for Masonis. Sellers wide open. Nobody Filled the lane and nobody went with her. A little bit up and down now. Citron got it. That is her fourth triple of the night. Go ahead, Citron. You can shoot till your arm falls off. Sonia four for four from outside. Miller will try and match it. Offensive rebound. That's been a big story through the first half. The Terps' ability to hang on the glass with Notre Dame. Okay, twice to the corners. Olivia Miles has been able to find three-point shooters. One on each side. When I say get in her window, I'm talking about take her vision away. Get in her space. Don't let her do what she wants to do with the ball. She's too dangerous. Miller. Off the window. Diamond Miller now with 16 to lead all scorers. Yeah, when you talk about Olivia Miles, second in the country last year in assists. As a freshman, she had a triple-double in the NCAA tournament, the first time ever for a freshman. And she's already had double-doubles this year, Debbie, with both assists and rebounds. A oh, good flash by Ebo. But that pass is poor. You gotta feed the post better. Sellers rejected by Watson. I mean, Ebo gets a double berry, puts her defender in the rim, and the pass is soft. And Watson on the other end makes up for it. Sellers, the nice kick out. Sonis off the mark. Citron head up, finds Mabry. Quick with the trigger. Short. That is exactly the way Dara Mabry warms up before the game. She has Miles passing her those advanced passes to the three-point line where she gets her feet organized and practices that play. You think the Mabrys Oof. have done that a lot. 286 career triples for Dara. Marina and Michaela also with over 200 each in their Notre Dame careers. Michaela now an assistant for the Irish. And there's nowhere to go around, run your sets. Miller, the cross, the scoop, and a foul. And she knew she had a mismatch. That's why she looked to go right at Ebo. There might be a little more size on the floor for Notre Dame, but there's definitely a speed advantage right now for Maryland. Miller to the line, she's two for two. Hey, coming up at nine Eastern over on ESPN, it's the second game of the night in the Big 12 Big East men's battle. Number nine, Kansas hosting Seton Hall at Allen Fieldhouse. 
And don't forget the second game of our women's double yes. dip tonight, right here. If you want to hang with the ladies on ESPN2, Iowa hosting NC State. That's number 10 against number 12. That should be outstanding. Caitlin Clark last year led the nation in scoring and assists. We've never had a player do that in the history of the women's game. Got a diamond in that game too, right? Yeah. For uh, NC State, Diamond Johnson. Diamond Johnson. Leading the way for the three-time ACC tourney That's champs. the key for NC State. Diamond's ability yeah. to attack that defense for Iowa. She can get in the gap. She doesn't need a lot of space. She's got to maintain tempo. She's yep. got to play good D, stay out of foul trouble, and oh, get to that, the rack. That house is electric in Iowa City. That'll be a good one coming up next. Got a whistle and a foul underneath. We got a two-point ball game here. 4-44 to go in the third. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. And that's what I'm going to try to do. Every minute that I have left, I will thank God for the day and the moment I have. It is, of course, V Week at ESPN when we partner with the V Foundation to highlight the urgent need for cancer research. It is game-changing research that helps save lives, and you can join the fight against cancer by visiting v.org slash donate. 100% of your donation goes directly to cancer research. My favorite part about Coach V's speech is the part about talking about how you may not be able to help save his life, but you might be able to help save someone in his family's life, and it did. It the did. research has helped his middle daughter, Jamie, who is a breast cancer survivor and is an incredible person who shares the message of her wonderful family every day, along with her sister, older sister, yeah. Nicole, who both of them are friends of mine. Those are two fun Valvanos oh, to hang yeah. out with. Uh, their beloved NC State Wolfpack coming up next against Iowa, and they'll be happy to hear that North Carolina is losing right now <laughs> to Indiana in one of the other ACC Big Ten Challenge games. Yeah, without Grace Berger, the best player for Indiana, who's out with a knee injury. Already six lead changes and a couple of ties here in the third quarter as we go back and forth. I mean, ebo has got to finish that. Mabry. Got it. You want to up in the third. Yeah, you want to make Mabry make a play with her feet. She's certainly capable, but it's better than letting her spot up outside the three-point line. Make her score over size. This is a player that has not been able to get going yet for Maryland is Abby Myers, their second yeah. leading scorer at 15 points a game. Rejected by Ebo. Got the block on Bree McDaniel. Two on one. Miles for Mabry. What a pass. Backcourt has made a difference for the Irish here in the third quarter. This crowd is just waiting for something to happen. That's going to be three on Miles. Four points, five assists for Miles. Mabry now with seven points. Nice job, two strong dribbles to clear some space. A contested two, and then Ebo says no. Two on one. What a dish. Sellers hits the free throw. This is a statistic uh, Brenda and her staff love right now. They are actually out free throwing Notre Dame. They get the most attempts and the most makes of anyone in the country. They usually get to the line 30 times a night. And the Irish so far just six free throw attempts. Well, I, I think we've talked about it before. The level of competition has changed yes. right now. This is a game plan to keep Notre Dame in front, not let them get inside. Miles, oh, she put a little English on that one, spun it up and in. And just as I say it, they allow dribble penetration to the middle of the floor. She stays in the game with the three personals. She looked over at Coach Ivy, and that's point guard to point guard yes. conversation. Like, hey, I got this. I'm going to be fine. Ooh, I don't know about that. She almost picked up yes. a board. Miller, Masonis with the dive in the paint. Anytime anyone else but Miles brings the ball up the floor, 
That is a good thing. For it's a good Notre thing Dame? for for the defense. Oh, for Maryland. Bransford draws the foul. Why is that, Debbie? Because you can attack it? Well, because you don't want her to have vision up the floor, and it, it slows down their progression moving the ball up the court. So you keep somebody on her, shadow her, shade her, miles up the floor, sh shadow her. That's what I'm talking about. Let somebody else bring it up. Let somebody else initiate the offense. You don't think Coach Oriema is thinking right now about how he's going to keep miles away from the ball? Uh, we'll get back to that in just a second because it's championship weekend. we got some big football games coming up. And, of course, the ACC championship live from Charlotte. Coverage actually gets underway Friday afternoon. We'll be there all, all Friday night. And then it starts Saturday, pregame and postgame with ACC PM and ACC Huddle. Yeah, uh, UConn will be coming in here on Sunday, Debbie. 3 o'clock Eastern on ABC. And uh, already working on that game plan, I'm sure. Well, and for Brenda Freeze, she's going to jump right into Big Ten play with Nebraska next. Yeah. She's got Connecticut on the schedule coming up soon. Two, two weeks. Two Sundays on ABC. That's five women's games on ABC before Christmas. And, of course, it all builds towards the exclusive coverage of the women's championships and the final this year will also be broadcast on ABC. Ricocheting around, the elusive Dee Kantner able to jump out of the way of that one. Uh, not one player, except for the player that saved the ball out of bounds, broke a sweat on that possession because they all stood around. Every single one of them stood there and watched the Notre Dame player try to save the ball out of bounds. Five on the shot clock. Miles, got it! <laughs> Sellers drives around and out. Gets her own miss. Oh, and that's Miles reaching in for her fourth personal foul. <laughs> Argued with her coaching staff to Trust her and stay in the game, and she picks up the fourth on a reach-in. Well, let's see what happens here. Miles to the bench. Three-point Notre Dame lead. They just got in a good offensive rhythm. She was the only one that's been able to find shooters in the corner in transition. Now Mabry goes to the point. She's a natural two. This is the versatility of Notre Dame now. However, many can, is can initiate. Citron. Westbound, back to Sonia. Drives the right side and she gets bumped by Masonis. That's the third on Faith. You know, Citron is a challenge to guard because she is a good three-point shooter, but you definitely have to stay between her and the basket. The amount of cushion you give her depends on the quality of her catch. If she catches it outside the three-point line and it's deep, you might come with a, you know, not as long a closeout because you want her to shoot it with range. But if you let her just drive by you and not try to defend her, you're, you're just helping her yep. become a better offensive player. Like, the, like, just stop the penetration. Get in the gap. Force her to pass it. Last year's ACC George. Freshman of the Year, now with 18. To match Maryland's Diamond Miller, the two leading scorers tonight. Shot clock is off, Bransford gets a pick. Citron on the run. She'll take it in, miss the layup. And gonna be a reach-in foul, going for the loose ball. 
Okay, look at this pick right here by KK Bransford. Quick hands by the freshman. And then if Citron takes this ball to the basket with two hands, she probably scores it and gets an and one. Looking for Mabry, the inbounder coming back on the floor. Westbell, corner three. Sellers has to launch. Good if it goes. Mabry and Miles, 14 points in that quarter to lead the way for Notre Dame. BC, Huskies already with three top 10 wins. They have Notre Dame on the road this Sunday and then Maryland on the road the following Sunday. Four point advantage for the Irish heading to the fourth and the turnover. Five ties and seven lead changes in that bouncing back and forth third quarter. And Neil Not Ivy can keep Olivia Miles on the bench as long as it stays with the lead. For, you know, till probably yeah. around the four, maybe the four minute mark. It depends on how it goes. Notre Dame's all ACC point guard sits with four fouls. And that's going to be an offensive foul on Westfeld, her third. You know, that is the eighth foul that Cheyenne Sellers has drawn in this game. She's been good off the bounce right here. She sells a pretty good uh, play right there. You know, we, flopping is an emphasis in our game, but we don't have a penalty for it. We'd like to see that. It, it uh, is on the men's side. Just a couple things I'd like yeah. to see change. Yeah. We're going to get on that rules committee. They just don't know it yet. <laughs> Masonis. Let's see if they can establish Sellers or Miller. They were the go-tos when things were going well offensively for Maryland. I mean, just tighten up your fundamentals. Pass, dribble, and shoot. Pass it to the open player. Take an uncontested shot and then get in a stance on defense. Just do it. Bransford, when things get hard, you know, in a game, you got to handle it better. Yeah, you do. Mabry picks up the dribble. Neil, Neil Ivey, who doesn't have a point guard on the court, calls the timeout. Four point game early in the fourth. Here's a look at this weekend's featured college football lineup. Conference championship Saturday begins at noon Eastern. Three games for you on ABC. And then the selection show. The final college playoff rankings coming Sunday at noon Eastern on ESPN. Also have a Sunday full of games for you tomorrow on ESPN starting at noon with some action. Your Ohio U Bobcats, Debbie, going for their first MAC title since 1968, taking on the Toledo Rockets. And if they win, Court Street is going to oh, be on boy. fire. Lit. I've seen Court Street on fire. Oh, you probably <laughs> had the matches. Here's Watson at the line. Notre Dame 7 of 11, now 7 of 12 at the strike. Unusual for them, held ball. And it will go to the Terrapins. Slow, slow scoring, Maryland's pace. It gives them a puncher's chance, right? We started at the beginning, it was like a heavyweight, back and forth, just a slugfest, right? Now, you got to, can, who can close? And this is where Notre Dame is going to have to make sure that they can execute and take care of the ball late. You had two questions, right, today. How, two. What, are they, what are they doing with their turnovers, and how well can they finish right. a close game? And we may be about to find out that answer. Diamond Miller, another scoop. That's been her specialty tonight as she hits 20 points. Yeah, I like the ball pressure right here on Mabry. Make her handle. Bransford 
pulls up and knocks it down. Diamond Miller, by the way, she could be a top draft choice. What, what do you really yeah. like about her game? Length. What's a work in progress, yeah, maybe? Absolutely. Uh, length, scoring three levels, can defend multiple positions, very good in ball screen defense, can score in transition. She's number one in black there at the top of the key. Before we decide who's going one, two, three, four in the draft, I think we have to let free agency take place yeah. and see how that all works because I think that's going to play a key role in teams getting what they need. Everyone knows Aaliyah Boston's the best player right now in the draft, but that doesn't necessarily mean she'll go first. She could. Indiana has the first pick. We're going to see what happens in free agency. There's a lot of question marks left. Ball in the lead for the Irish. You can always draft the best player and trade her. Yes. There's lots of things that can happen. Ebo went down awkwardly. Appears to be okay, but she's the last to touch it. Now let me clarify before all of South Carolina gets lit <laughs> up and says, I, didn't, I said Aliyah, I did not say that. That's not what I said. Miller out of the short corner, spins to her left in the traffic, draws the foul, and she's fired up. So the game plan offensively for Coach Freeze's team has been playing off the bounce, attacking Notre Dame, trying to get an advantage on a mismatch. Diamond Miller has a speed and length advantage on Ebo, and you can see the emotion by Diamond. Her first miss from the line, now four of five. She's shooting 50% from the floor tonight. Seven minutes to go, one possession game. Ebo, short. Miller, excuse me, Sellers got a piece of it, and then the foul on the second chance. Let's see who they give that to. That is number four on Masonis. But you know what, Beth? That's exactly the way you attack the pressure. It's three-quarter court pressure. You reverse the ball, get it to middle, and then you get numbers on the backside. It's a great bounce pass by Mabry into Eva, who has already run straight to the rim and yep. made herself available. Mabry will inbound. Ebo, short. Miller with the push, looking for a lane. Scooped it up with the right hand, that won't drop. Citron. See, everybody's yelling flop because that's the men's rule. Foul will put the Irish on the line. Miles content to just hang. They still have the lead. No rush for her with right. the four fouls. Yeah, I, I think you go, like I said, get closer to the four or five minute mark and see where you are. I mean, what is the possession? Where where the possession count for either team, right? As long as you have the lead, I think you feel good. KK, the two-time Ohio Miss basketball, and a twice a state champion out of Cincinnati. And a great kid who is a perfect fit here at Notre Dame, is gonna have a brilliant career. Maybe in line, they, they've had a rich tradition of freshman of the years, including two current Irish, Citron and Westbelt. Miller, and one! Diamond Miller taking charge here for Maryland. Now I think Brenda Fries is doing a great job of calling the switches, because Notre Dame is switching on some of those actions, and when they do, you get a matchup right here that she knows she can take off the bounce. Watson, it's smart. You're calling the switch over there by putting Diamond Miller in a ball screen with a person that you want the switch to come to. Completes the three-point play, Miller. 
12 of her 24 here in the second half. Been very consistent. Offensive rebound, and Miller gets a block. Doing it at both ends. Sellers. Nice hesitation, tried to wrap it. I mean, why do you drive into traffic when there's nothing there? Over-penetrated. Citron lost the handle. Was it stripped? It'll stay at this end with Notre Dame. It's coming down right here, right? Possession for possession. Who's going to execute the best? I think because of Notre Dame's issues in the past about taking care of the ball late, I think the pressure starts to shift to them. Good find, Westbelt to Watson. Myers, and Watson dropped to the deck on that one. She's called for the foul. That's her third. Watch this pass, good seal inside by Watson. Good pass away from the defense. Leads Watson to the bucket, it's an easy two. After you do all the work to post up and get great position. Miller, defended by Mabry, has to give it up. Wide open look from the corner. And Alexander drains the three. It's a one-point game. Good vision by Diamond to see over the top of that gap help. And then the takeaway. Terps can grab the lead. Miller's got it. Sellers scoops it up and in. Now I'm bringing Olivia Miles back. As and soon as just, they lose the lead, she's up off the bench. She just got up to go to the scorer's table. Good backdoor cut, Citron. 20 now for Sonia. That's the first time Notre Dame has gotten that action all night. Myers, the three. One point Notre Dame lead. Back and forth, Beth, exactly what we thought this would be when it's game slowed down, who can execute the best? Miller draws all the attention. Alexander relocates to the corner, sticks the triple. Shy Sellers had a great first quarter. She's coming back alive here in the fourth. Coming up right here on ESPN2, Caitlin Clark and her number 10th ranked Iowa Hawkeyes taking on NC State as the ACC Big Ten Challenge rolls on. Well, this is interesting right here, Beth. Looking forward to that one next. We've got a pair of former national champs tussling here in the fourth. Four and a half to play. And Olivia Miles is back on the court for Notre Dame. They're starting point guard playing with four fouls. Citron, wide open look. Can't knock it down. Diamond Miller, a double-double. 24 points, 10 rebounds. Got away with a the carry there. She's also got five assists. And they knock down the three. Back to Second back. of this quarter for Alexander. Terps back on top, under four to go. Notre Dame's got to accelerate through their actions here. Here's Miles, five and white. Got to move the ball. Here comes the ball screen late. Miles for three, no. Rebound Sellers. Long enough rebound to start the break. Oh, and a bad pass from Sellers at the knees. There's a kick. Think Diamond. Oh, she kept her hand on top of the ball. All right. No problem. Sets up this in transition. Alexander, another corner triple. Gives Maryland a two point lead. Everybody with a touch. Sellers trapped. Not the place to pick up the dribble. They get away with it. Miller finds an open shooter. 
Diamond trying to get to that loose ball and a foul on the floor, trying to box Miller out. It's going to be on Matty Westbelt, I believe, or do they get it? It might be on Citron. It is on Citron, her first. Miller to the line. Diamond Miller has done a fantastic job of getting to the free throw line. She is six for seven from the free throw line. Notre Dame as a team is nine for 14. 25 now for Diamond. They are actually winning the battle on the boards. Well, we talked about it. They were talking about it in the studio. The difference a schedule can make. A tough one for Maryland to start out. For the Irish, 6-0 by an average of nearly 30 points per game. Their first big test. Can they pass it in the final three minutes? Good D. Everyone closing out. High hands on shooters. Westbelt. Sellers has it. Miller immediately gets her attention and points at the clock. And says, let's burn some. I don't think you want to slow down too much if you're Maryland. I think you want to keep going through your action. Get the switch that you want for Diamond Miller. Miller, the step back. Around and out. Look at Masonis in there battling for rebounds. Brenda Fries calls her her toughest competitor. That is a winning play on the glass right there by the senior, Faith Masonis. Possession arrow favors the Irish as they get Ebo and Bransford back on the floor. And that's a major storyline tonight, that rebounding turnaround. Mabry handles, they put Miles in the corner off the ball. Look at Masonis fronting Ebo. You gotta rely on some backside help. That's down on the block. Miles. She didn't even look to the other side of the floor where the help was over helping at the rim, but she can make that play. Change direction to get to the rim. Down two, under two to go. Notre Dame in his zone. Myers the pull up off the dribble and hits. Oh, what a big bucket for Abby Myers. The Ivy League player of the year last year at Princeton, playing in a big game. Good timing there. She had not been shooting it well prior. Ebo, and that time the backside help was able to get to her and knock it out of bounds. We've seen a lot of different actors here from Maryland make a play here late. Abby Myers does a nice job getting to the elbow for a pull-up jump shot. Citron takes the inbound and gets the land. to stop. Offensive rebound, Myers. Diamond Miller wants the ball here. Trying to go to work on Ebo. She's doubled. They make her pick up the dribble. Miles with the rebound. Olivia Miles on the run. Will take it all the way. Basket and a foul. The flex for Notre Dame and a chance at the lead. Look at the emotion by Olivia Miles. Notre Dame back on top. 48 seconds to go. That foul was Diamond Miller's fourth. Brenda Fries didn't advance the ball with the timeout. She wants to use the full court. Miller calling for it. Diamond's got it. Goes left. Back to the right. Up and in. Maryland on top. Timeout Notre Dame. They can 
them use that to yeah. advance. They'll yeah. have two timeouts left, three for the Terps. That was close because yeah. I'm not sure Neil Ivey, did she get the timeout before the ball came in bounds? That's what Maryland wants to know. It's a great move and counter inside. You gotta have a double move and Diamond Miller has it. This is stuff that we talked about early in the season, right, Debbie? And we actually saw it the other night in the Ohio State, uh, last night, Ohio State Louisville. Coaching up your players late in game, not to inbound the ball too quickly so you can get the timeout. Once you inbound, you can't use the timeout to advance. Same thing on a rebound, right? Don't dribble the ball immediately if you're looking to advance. How often do we talk about parity in the women's game? Yeah. And if we are having parity and we have teams that are all very good, you gotta be working on situations. Time and score, you have to know at the end of the game how to handle certain situations. Who needs the ball? I call it the three W's of a good point guard. Who to get the ball to, when and where? You have to have an understanding of that. Came into play in the South Carolina Stanford yeah. game as well. I don't know if that's a reviewable play. I gotta, we gotta ask D. Cantner after the game. I mean, could you review whether that ball came in bounds before the timeout was called? Especially with the timeout coming way down yeah. here in front of the coach, uh, the other uh, coach's box. And here's the other thing, Beth. Doesn't Maryland have a foul to give? Yes, they do. One foul to give. Possession arrow is with Maryland. Maryland with three timeouts. Miles again on the drive, tough shot. Weak side, Ebo had it, couldn't hold it. Maryland's got it and they will use a timeout to advance. Before the foul. Good job by Maryland to get the timeout before Notre Dame committed a foul to put them on the line. 21 seconds to go, so the shot clock is again, off. That was close. Olivia Miles gets a switch, Ebo in the lane. Sellers does a good job of contesting without fouling. That's a tough shot to take. Watch the ball bounce around right here. And Masonis, I believe, is the one that calls the timeout. After they secure possession, Masonis is going stop right here, timeout. Update two on the foul situation. Maryland does not do have, have a foul to give. The yeah. next one would put them on the line. I looked at the board. Notre Dame uh, already putting Maryland on the line. Right, there's four fouls, there's no fouls to give. But they do have the possession arrow due the Terps. And they will inbound at the far hash with a one point advantage. So if you're Notre Dame, you gotta try to get a steal. If you can't get a steal, if you can't get a quick trap, you got a foul right away. If I'm Maryland, I'm looking to make a direct pass right into Diamond Miller on the block. I want Diamond Miller on the free throw line. She's eight for nine. If I'm Notre Dame, I'm not letting Diamond Miller catch it. And Maryland, all five on the floor, outstanding free throw shooters. Miles is not on the floor right now with those four personal fouls. The inbound is to Miller. They bring a double, they try for the steal, and there is the foul. That's on Westbelt, that's her fourth. And now Miller, who is five for six at the, uh, excuse me, eight for nine at the line, 28 points tonight, 12 rebounds. So what Neil Ivey's gonna do is she's gonna call timeout, put Olivia Miles back in the game and advance the ball, depending on what happens here. Either way, if they gotta secure the rebound if she misses the second one. Okay, so even if she makes, it's a two point game. Point Maryland lead. Here's the timeout to advance, and that will be the last one for Notre Dame. Big night for Diamond Miller. 
29 points. Well, she's been terrific. She has worked to get switches. She's been good off the bounce. She's been able to get a piece of the paint, get to the rim. She's been able to get to the free throw line as well. She's been a tough competitor off the bounce, a tough check on the mismatches in the switches. 6-3, committed to getting to the rim with great length and athleticism. Okay, so what are you looking for here on the inbound, Debbie? Well, if, uh, if I'm Merrill, I'm switching on everything. I'm not letting a direct pass come inside. I want to make sure you take it, force Notre Dame to take a contested shot. Okay, and Notre Dame, I'm trying to get the ball over. Here comes Olivia Miles. Look for her to get it right back after she inbounds it. She's going to go left, and then she's probably going to come back to that right hand. One of the best shooters is Mabry, number one, down in the corner for Notre Dame. And they're going to inbound it to Citron. The catch inside. The basket to tie the game. That's the first thing I said is do not let a direct pass go right to the paint. What a play. Miles assisting Citron even at 72. And a timeout for a half-court inbound here for Maryland. Very well executed. And a great delivery by Miles. Not enough pressure on the out of bounds. Miles sees right to the post. Good play call by Neil Ivey. Seventh assist for Miles Citron with 24. Our seventh tie with 12 lead changes here in this raucous second half. And now for Maryland, I gotta believe it's Miller time. So now Notre Dame has no timeouts. Maryland has to inbound the ball first, okay? Then you're gonna look to take a, make your, start your action with eight or nine seconds so you have time for an offensive rebound. Number one in black, Miller's on the left block. Alexander to inbound, Sellers. Citron on Miller. They flatten it out, 1-4, Miller's got it. Five seconds to go. Miller, the pull up off the cross and she hits it at the buzzer! Maryland! With the lead as the buzzer goes and the officials will check at midcourt and an apparent Terrapin win to hand the Irish their first loss of the season. Diamond Miller has been a tough check all night. Look at the time and score. Aware gets the switch and another switch. Good screen on the, on the elbow by Masonis, who frees her up just enough to get separation. What a crafty finish by Diamond Miller at the buzzer. What a win for Maryland. The money shot from Miller, 31 points on the night. Then the reacts for the Terrapin bench. We still await the final word. What a game. What oh, terrific from both sides down the stretch. Uh, not quite sure what the issue would be here. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what would be the issue. Clearly it left her hand. second game of our doubleheader. For our entire crew alongside Debbie Antonelli, I'm Beth Mullins. Thanks so much for joining us. Diamond Miller gets it done at the buzzer for Maryland as we send it from South